I know you want to attack the hell out of me and you are and listen to this right listen to what I'm about to say you are perfectly allowed I have no issues no qualms with it I watched all of Toxic Tears and Jake Monroe's breakup videos so that you don't have to because they were almost six hours long. I will say this, if you do have the time to spare, definitely go watch their videos because this is gonna be my opinion about the things that stood out to me, but I'm obviously not gonna be able to comment on every little thing. It was a lot. I didn't actually think I was gonna do a video about it, but I really feel like there's some stuff that is extremely important to talk about. I think there are a lot of people in relationships going through things like like this and I think they really need to know that they're not alone. I feel like above all this was a relationship that should have ended far before it did. They were together like almost a decade. That's a long time like that is a huge portion of their life. So I get why they have so much to say. Now I don't understand why he's making videos and the level of angry that he is, which we're gonna get into. I think that, you know, if you have the time to spare to listen to both videos, definitely feel free to do so. I can summarize his pretty easily, but in, in order to be fair, you know, somebody did re-upload his video because he did delete it. So if you would like to go and watch the full two plus hours and hear everything he has to say to form your own opinion, definitely do that. Cause I am one of those people where I'm like, you know, listen to both stories and then form your opinion. Cause you know, there's always two sides to every story. So with that being said, I did listen to both and I have some things to say. So if you are unaware of who these two people are, let me give you a little bit of context. Toxic Tears on YouTube is also known as Kaya and she was in a relationship with Jake Monroe, who also does YouTube content and Twitch content. And they used to have a channel together called Metal Ass Gaming. They're pretty known on the internet as like the gothic couple. I've been following Aya for a long time because before I did this type of content, I did paranormal videos and spooky story times. I also did Witch's Moon unboxings, which she did, and that's how I found her. And I always really liked her. She seemed very kind. I would kind of see him a little bit through her videos. But to be honest, honest with you, I have not watched their content. Well, I never watched his, but I hadn't watched her content in a really long time. But I did see her original breakup video. I think it was the first one that was made there. I felt like she was very respectful in that video. She didn't say anything negative about him. She just basically said it caught her off guard, the breakup, and that she was currently living in one of their studios that was extremely cold. And she seemed very sad in it. And I guess he also made a breakup video that I never saw, but what people were saying about it, his emotions in it were not like hers. Like she seemed very sad. And in his videos, he was like, I'm going on tour and all this stuff and started talking about all these things he was doing. And so a lot of people were like, this feels like a tour promotion. So people were just kind of speculating and putting two and two together about what they thought happened. But people were kind of assuming that he met this girl named Kat and that he cheated on Kaya and then left Kaya for Kat. And that's what people kind of put together. and people were also very like, why would you just straight up kick her out? Like she's in a studio that is cold. Why would you do that? It seems really cruel when you've been with somebody for a very long time. Now let's fast forward to the current stuff, okay? And I'm gonna first talk about his video and then we're gonna get into hers. You're gonna wanna hear both. When you see somebody that was with somebody for almost a decade and they make a two plus hour long video about it. And this was not just a, a full video that was not edited. It had a lot of jump cuts in it. And somebody who's been editing videos, that takes a lot of time. So when I saw it and I saw that it was like very edited, I was like, okay, like he is super confident in this video because he filmed it, but then he also had to listen to himself back and edited it. <laughs> Second time. Second time I'm gonna film this video. He had a lot of time to change his mind before he uploaded it. For a big portion of the beginning of his video, he really wants the person who is listening to him speak to know and to understand that he built his internet career on his own that he did not get any sort of following from Kaya, from Toxic Tears, that he built it by himself, that he had videos that went viral and that he's known on his own. Like, I don't know why that was extremely important for him to tell in this video, but he really wanted people to know. I got my own following here. I posted a video, it did super well, built what I have or had 
have from the ground up myself i did that that's what i did i know people have been trying to strip it from me saying that kaya made me who i am but that's literally not the case somehow the fact that kaya had nothing to do with my popularity at all completely slipped their mind i have done this on my own money and fame these two things these two things i worked really hard for people were so excited to strip me of both of these things that's why i was really frustrated that people thought that I wasn't in any way a product of Kaya's popularity. If anyone wants even more analytics about this, feel free to ask. I can go into even more. I can bring up each video. I can bring up the videos that were getting extremely popular at the time. Like for example, my e-girls video. My personal self, I didn't know who he was until her. She's how I knew who he was, but he really seems like offended by that. Like he doesn't want people to think that he is known from her at all. He needs to understand that there are a lot of us that do know who he is because of her. And he also talked a lot about money in this video, a lot. I was financially responsible for Kaya completely. Again, it's something that people were trying to perpetuate in order to discredit any sort of financial benefit I provided to Kaya. It's like, oh, it's so nice that, you know, he's willing to give so much of his money in order to make sure that she's provided for, has the tools she needs to do her jobs and her hobbies. No, people instead were like, yeah, could also be financial abuse. So maybe it's not nice at all. Further adding to the villainization of of me. The whole video could be basically summarized by him talking about money and his ex-girlfriend Kaya being messy. To summarize the two plus hour video, that is what he talked about the most. He mostly wanted you to know that he was financially secure and providing for Kaya, that he built his career on his own, that she was messy. So he showed a lot of screenshots of the money that he would send to her. Here are my financial records of the last of between 2019 and 2021 and this is every transaction between me and Kaya of me sending her money so you can have a look at the details some of the more revealing details like sore codes and bank details some of those have been blurred out but you can clearly see the monetary value and also the recipient of the monetary of the monetary value i did a quick uh total for you in case you guys don't want to pause and total all this up yourself so between 2019 and the end of 2021 uh that i gave kaya this amount it's like forty thousand pounds which is about forty five thousand dollars that's the amount of money i gave her what was she using it for i don't know i just knew that more and more things were arriving to the house every single day but that doesn't include the moped or the scooter that i got her that doesn't include the deposit on the car. That doesn't include the iMac that I bought her. That doesn't include the MacBook Pro that I got her. It doesn't include the two PCs that I got her, the gaming PC and the streaming PC that I got her. And you're probably noticing that a lot of these items here, like the car and the moped, for example, were there so that she could have her own sense of freedom. I paid for her driving test. I paid for her driving lessons, put the deposit down on the car for her, put the car in her name, I was already aware of the fact that I was buying everything for her, that I was responsible for a lot of the good that was in her life right now. He also showed screenshots where he asked her how she was doing once he kicked her out and she would be like not doing too great and then he would send her more money. You need to get out. You have two studios that I'm paying for that you can go to. You can go there. I'm paying for your car. I will send you food money per day. I will make sure that you are supported. Live at a friend's house. Go to your mom's house go somewhere that's not here but you need to get out that was the end of me and Kaya's relationship I don't really know why he was showing that exactly because it showed that she wasn't asking him for anything that he was going to her it did come off like he was using it against her because he was showing screenshots of all of the money that he was giving her but also screenshots where she literally wasn't asking for it it was very strange it seemed like he really wanted people to know I made the money at the end of our relationship I bought the house and I provided for her the comment that I want to make about that is especially after watching her video is that, you know, they had been together for a very long time and there were some points in their relationship where he wasn't making a lot of the money and she was, and everything was always mutual between the two of them. They would help each other out. Yeah, so MAG earning money was like a joint thing. Like, you know, that wasn't him when MAG earned money, that wasn't him earning money, that was the two of us earning money. And then my channel on top of that would be earning. So. Yeah, and there were times where like, I think whenever I like released a certain amount of merch, like it did really, really well. And I like made like, you know, a big like little chunk of money. And I was really excited for that. And like, you know, 
technically that was my money, but it, as he said in the video as well, that all got sent to him and it was divided evenly. So he got half of everything I earned um, after, you know, our bills and stuff were paid. Now I'm aware, you know, he did start making like, a, like, you know, a, like a lot more money than I had ever made and than he had ever made in the past there, like towards the end of the relationship. So like maybe it wouldn't have made as much sense to keep going that way, but still like when we had operated for like a decade on all of our money was split completely equally. And in the second he gets some success, that's not the case anymore and like you know he'll decide like what's said and like he you know like definitely like he gave me a lot of money but he's acting as if I was spending all of his money he was spending infinitely more which is fair enough he earned it but it's he's trying to paint it as if I was like stealing all his money and it's one of those it took me a long time to come around to even spending anything because I was used to us living without very much money for a long time so like whenever he started making all these like crazy big purchases I was actually really stressed I was like no we need to save but you know like he kept like pushing it and he was like no come on like you know your boyfriend's rich now what do you want your rich boyfriend to buy for you like I'm not exaggerating like that's literally the kind of things he'd say and he was like no like we can do it and you're like you can buy nice things now like what do you want like we'll buy nice things um and you know then eventually I came around to it and I got used to that kind of lifestyle because that's just the lifestyle we were living so like I don't like I don't know what he expected after convincing me to spend a lot of money and now he's like, oh, she spent all my money. I'm like, you, you said, you wanted me to. Like, I don't understand. He's just trying to use that against me now and it's fucked. And like, even if he hadn't, what was expected? Like, after 10 years of us sharing things equally, then he was just gonna be like buying like 23,000 pound motorbikes and, you know, then like a couple of weeks later, like another fucking like 10 grand motorbike and I was just meant to like, like scrape by on like pennies like is that what, what he expected because if that's how I'd been from the start of the relationship I don't know but like you know it was all equal until he was the one earning all the money and then suddenly no it's a, it doesn't make sense like I said he was encouraging me to live this more lavish lifestyle and so I did I like I don't know what else to say about that like we were both spending a lot of money he was spending a lot more than me you know, like all his motorbike stuff all his motorbike helmets and jackets and all and that's fair if that's what he wanted to do that is completely fine but he's painting it out like I just like took all his money and I hate it is infuriating to me that he keeps saying that I was only with him for his money and I was using him for his money we were together for almost 12 years he had money for maybe two of them I got married last year but prior to that me and my husband were together for 10 years and we lived together and we shared bills and our names were on the lease and neither one of us have has ever held it over the other one's head who paid rent that month who bought the groceries that month who bought the couch I don't care what anybody does in their relationship if they want to have their own separate finances that's great if they have their separate bank accounts that's great however you want to do stuff I genuinely I do not care. The reason why I'm mentioning this is because in their relationship, it seemed as though like at the beginning that things were shared and that was fine until he started making all the money and then suddenly it wasn't fine anymore. Suddenly it's she's being lazy and not doing anything. He wanted people to know that he bought things for her and just stuff that like if me and my husband ever split, I would never, <laughs> neither would he get on the internet and be like I bought him this I bought him that you don't use it over each other's heads and be like I bought this this month and you didn't do anything like I do not think that it is healthy to hang that over the person's head and to make them feel insecure and bad about themselves because you paid rent that month or bought groceries that month or you bought them something that you could have not bought for them but you chose to if you are making that purchase for them as a gift there's something wrong if once you're you're mad at them later down the road, you use that over the top of their head. I really truly think that that's toxic behavior. I think that that's a power trip. I think that that's somebody who is aggressively insecure within themselves that now that they're making a lot of money, they feel like they can use that against somebody. And I think that that's gross. The whole point of me bringing that up was that he talked a lot about money in his video and she says that they shared everything. And then suddenly he made a lot and it was his money. I think that's where the problem lies here. There should have been a discussion from day one if they were gonna keep things separate or if they were going to share it. There are talks that you really need to have so that later down the road, these things don't become an issue. Within the two hours of his video that I watched, I didn't hear anything horrible that she did. There was no abuse from her. He talked about how she has an ADHD diagnosis and that she's extremely messy and 
doesn't pick up after herself. One of the biggest things that me and Kaya ever fought about was the fact that she literally never, ever, ever, and I know this is gonna, I, mean, I could do this for a long time, she never cleaned anything ever. Now, I wasn't looking for a housewife that cleaned the floor below me while I sat in front of the TV and drank a beer and ate the food she cooked me. All I was asking for was literally a 50-50 split of cleaning the house, of cleaning the environments that we lived in. And these concerns turned from casual conversations into frustrated requests into full-blown argument that she wasn't cleaning because she had a severe lack of respect for me completely like in my household if my dad asked me to clean the house while he's away at work like do the dishes for example because i respected and i loved my dad while he was away at work i would do the dishes that's just how things worked you know He's going out, earning the money. I get to stay at home playing video games all day. The least I can do is clean the dishes. Could you just, you know, the kitchen, the dishes, the cat litter, just something, please. Just, just the one thing. Just do that for me, please. Met with, I'll try. Dad paid for her to go private, where she then got an ADHD diagnosis along with the medication. She was excited. I was excited. I was super excited. I'm like, yes, cool. She's got the medication. The, medica the medication she's been talking about for months and she promised me that once she starts taking it that she'll start cleaning and she's gonna do all the things that I've been asking her to do for the, the entire relationship. First month goes by, medication doesn't work. Second month, medication still doesn't work and I believe she stopped taking it. Then a few months go by and I'm like, the house isn't been cleaned at all. And I'm like, are you still on the medication? She says, no, it didn't work. And I said, well, go back and get a different type of medication she goes back and gets a different type of medication that also didn't seem to work she admits this she says that she is messy and because of her adhd it makes it difficult to clean i have always been open about the fact that i am messy i am i am a messy person and i really really struggle with cleaning due to adhd say so i literally never ever ever clean anything ever is an exaggeration. It, like, I'll say, you know, it wasn't often, but, you know, I would try. There'd be a lot of times where I'd sort of, like, start cleaning and I wouldn't be able to finish because I'd get to a certain point where I was just overwhelmed and couldn't figure it out. I did try. There were times that, you know, I, like, I cleaned the whole kitchen and things like that, but it wasn't very often, and I admit that, and it is something that I struggled with, and it's something I'm pretty sure I've cried about on my channel before, like, it is something that has always really badly affected me. Like, he only... <laughs> I get it. I get that he only goes into how it affected him. You know, humans in general are selfish. Even throughout the relationship, it was, he never acknowledged how badly it affected me, you know, like he, and I think he even says it in the video, I'm, I'll get to it at the point in my notes, but he always basically took the symptoms of my mental health issues, being depression, anxiety, and the ADHD, as this massive mark of disrespect. It always came down, you don't respect me, you're doing this because you don't respect me, you're doing this on purpose because you have no respect for me. No matter how many times I told him, I do respect you, it's not that, this is just something that I really struggle with and I would like I would cry and beat myself up and fucking hit myself For being that way like if he thinks it affected him badly Like he doesn't know what it was like to be in my head like it ruined my life more than anyone's You know because like not only am I having to live in the mess that both of us created by the way But certainly big part of it me I admit that not only am I like having to live in that have him scream at me, scream at me, and make me feel like the worst person in the world for it. But it, then I'm also in my head like, wow, I am the most useless person on this earth. I can't even do something as basic as just tidying up. That doesn't feel good. Like, there is a huge flaw in me that I tr still hate about myself. I'm still messy. My house is nowhere near as bad as it used to get when me and Jake lived together because we both created a lot of mess. And like, he makes it always like, I think he even said at one point, like, you know, he had, he came home and cleaned everything. That's not the way things worked. Generally, for most of the relationship, we would both make a fucking horrendous mess. Like, we lived in absolute squalor. It was terrible. It was really, really bad. Like, it was gross. We would both make this massive mess. No one would clean. He would get more and more angry. I'd get more upset. And then he would blow up, scream at me, and then he would eventually clean. It's not like he was always cleaning and I was never cleaning. It was the fact that no one would clean until it was a big blow up and then he would eventually do it and I, you know, admit it was almost always him who would eventually snap and do it and that's not a good way to live and I contributed to that and I've never denied that, like, that has always been an issue and it's not something I was doing out of laziness or spite or disrespect it's just something I've struggled with I do think it's really unfair that, you know, whenever we both made a mess and neither of us cleaned 
I never like screamed at him to do it. You know, like I would like get upset and I would like ask him like, could you please like, I can't handle this. Could you please clean? Which would usually result in me getting yelled at. But like, I never blew up at him and was like, what the fuck, just fucking clean. You're like, I would never do that. I never like, <sighs> and so yeah, it just feels unfair. Like I'm aware that I contributed to a massive part of that problem. I'd be willing to say that potentially most of it was me, but I wasn't the only one and I was the only one who would get screamed at and be left cowering in the fucking corner over it. So it's not fair that I'm taking the full brunt of that. I know that if you were in a relationship with somebody who's extremely messy, that it sucks. If my husband was leaving huge messes everywhere, if I was leaving huge messes everywhere and we weren't picking up after ourselves, one of us would be frustrated at the other one for not doing that. So I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh, that's not annoying at all. Of course it's annoying, but I am going to say you really need to educate yourself yourself on ADHD and how that affects people because it is different for someone who has ADHD than it is for someone who isn't. It's not like somebody's just like choosing to be lazy. Now, the thing about Kaya that I respect a lot is that she is very honest about this, that she has a hard time with that. It's not like in this video he was talking about how she was abusive and she threw things and she punched walls. He was saying she has ADHD and she doesn't clean and that it made him extremely angry. Like I said, I get that if somebody's leaving messes that that's that's frustrating. What I don't get is being with somebody for that long and then making this long of a video about how they're messy. That's what I don't get. It comes off like you're using something that somebody is very clear that they struggle with against them with a whole bunch of strangers listening to it. And I'm sure it was really embarrassing for her to have to sit there and listen to her being trashed on like that for that long. And what was even more weird to me is that once you get into her video, it gets confusing that he thought it was totally acceptable to complain about how she was messy for two hours, but probably doesn't think it's acceptable for her to say the things that he was doing in the relationship the entire time. Before I say what she said, he talked about how he had anger issues. I couldn't confide in her about it. It was just this nasty, disgusting monster that came out of me that, that she had villainized. And every single time I got angry, I felt disgusted in myself afterwards, which, you know, it's not healthy to feel disgusted. It's definitely good to acknowledge that being angry is not right. But then again, when it comes to depression and anxiety and people tell you to get over it, what, how do you react? You're like, yeah, sure. Let me just not be depressed anymore. Right? So you guys get an attitude about it because you realize that you can't just not be depressed. So whenever I tell you, I got angry. And whenever I tell her how my anger was, and whenever I tell anyone else how my anger was, I'm not getting angry because I feel like it. I'm getting angry and getting these acute, like, I can't even begin to describe what it was I had because I don't have it anymore. I've gotten over it now, but the best way I can describe it, and I've described it like this before in a video and streams, but it's like, I literally want to open my skull so the pressure can get out. It's an, it's a acute and painful and intense level of rage. And it's, it's so, and I, it knocks me out for the rest of the day. As soon as that anger spike goes, I am out for the rest of the day. I will sleep for the rest of the day and I'm just done. I can't help it. I'm not doing it because I'm an asshole. I'm doing it because I can't control it. It's because things outside of my control are affecting me in ways that I can't control. And because there is no control, I lose control. It's not something I'm, I'm doing because I want to do it. It's happening to me and I'm just along for the ride. I'm not going to be shamed. I had no control over it. It happened. I was just in there. He said that when we first started talking, I told her that I had bad anger issues and she was aware of that. And he said it as though she chose to get with me anyway, knowing I was an angry person. She was 16 years old. When you're 16, you think, oh, it's fine. You haven't had enough life experience. You haven't been with somebody yet that is extremely violent. And I also wanna make this comment too. He said, you know, when he hit his 30s, like he matured and she stayed the same. I'm still seeing a lot of immaturity in him, to be honest, because I think a 16 year old deserves to be in an environment where they are cowering down in the corner of a room while a man is breaking stuff all around them because when they were 16, they said, oh, it's fine that you have anger issues. A 16 year old doesn't understand, okay? And so I think that 
it if you in your 30s and you want to say you've matured that should be something that you learned i did not like how in his video the way he talked about his anger he made a comment about how she got an adhd diagnosis but still didn't do anything to be cleaner or to pick up after herself and he was kind of judgmental of her in that video about her not doing anything about it but then he also said that he was going to go do something about his anger but then made the decision to work on it himself and even though anger is a very valid emotion it's a symptom of another another mental illness one that I got semi-diagnosed. I went to a psychiatrist who believed it was actually caused by bipolar disorder. I never followed up on it and I, and I didn't want to take the medication for it because I was ashamed of taking the medication, of being on medication. So I decided to deal with it myself and I did. It's gone now. I haven't got like an acute sense of rage in years. Five plus years. It's been a long time. And if you think it's been recently or if you think I've always been that angry and I'm still that angry, then it sounds like someone is trying to take things out of context and perpetuate a narrative that doesn't exist. So I was always made to feel really shameful about my anger. I had no help with it. Kaya wasn't helping with it. I had no friends to help me with it. So there was a lot of hip hypocrisy I was seeing where we need to be understanding over you being scary, but you don't need to be understanding over the fact that she has a, a mental health diagnosis that makes it so that she's messier than the average person. The way he was talking about his anger came off to me like somebody who hasn't truly dealt with it yet, because if you have dealt with it, you wouldn't make any excuse uses for it ever. In her video, she talked about how he was violent. I want to say this. He never hit her or was physical with her, but he would hold his fist up, making her think that he could. He would throw things and break plates all over the kitchen. He would put holes in doors and in the walls. And she also said, you know, he made a comment about how he hadn't done those things in the past five years, but that wasn't true. And she showed a screenshot where the landlord of the place that they lived before the new house they moved into was really upset about holes being in doors and everything because he made sure to go around and show the new house that they hadn't lived in for very long, that none of those doors had any holes in them. They literally lived there, I think they said like two months or something like that before they were completely split up. So you didn't put a hole in anything within two months, that's great. But apparently in the place you lived before, you were doing that all the time. He made a two hour long video about her being extremely messy and leaving messes everywhere and that he felt extremely disrespected because she would leave a mess but you would put an irreparable hole in a door. How's that not a mess? You know what I mean? Like it just was extremely weird to me. It came off like he's still very angry about it and that he's still an angry person in the middle of saying that he's dealt with his anger. I wasn't getting that vibe. He was angry at me and we were both in the car together. He would drive in a really aggressive, stressful way that really really scared me like it genuinely scared me he knew this because i would literally be sitting like pressed into the seat as far as i could go with my eyes shut crying and shaking as he just drove in this really scary way and doing that he's yelling at me and punching doors and like how am i meant to take that other than it it's me that he wants to be punching like that's how it feels if he's yelling at me and it's my fault and he's so angry he needs to hit something like that feels like he wants to hit me, but he's just taking out on something else. And like, well, I, I think I'll get to my nose, but he tried to say that that didn't happen in the last house. It didn't happen in like the newest house that we lived in for like two months or something before he threw me out. The house before that, he tried to say it didn't happen. It absolutely did. The holes were full of doors to the point where I have an email from the landlord after we moved out, furious about the holes in the doors and stuff. And I tried to downplay it, pretend it wasn't really happening that much when like, you know, there were, and like, most of the holes were in the bathroom door. And I was trying to think like, why the bathroom door and why not the bedroom door? And it's like, it's because the bathroom is the only door that locked. So when I was really stressed, I needed to get away. I would usually get, like go into the bathroom because it was a very small house. I'd go into the bathroom. That was the door I could lock and try to like be away. So that was the door that would get punched more. A month or something before we moved out of that old house, I'd come downstairs in the morning. We we're both in the kitchen and it's a really small kitchen. There's not much space. And I noticed that he'd like, he'd had turkey for dinner the night before and he'd accidentally left the turkey on the counter. I didn't get angry at him, I didn't nag him. My exact sort of thing was like, oh babe, you left your turkey out. You know, just like a, oh no, you're a turkey. Like I wasn't like, oh, you stupid cunt, you left the meat. I was just like, oh babe, you're turkey. And he just exploded. He started smashing fucking plates on the floor. I'm like, uh, like, you know, as he starts screaming, I'm like pressed into the very corner of the kitchen. The way he reacted to it was so bad that he was like demolishing the house 
and it's like again like screamed at me to just get out of the house and I didn't know to. I was like in like little tiny shorts and pajamas. I had to grab Sebastian so that he wouldn't be in the way of things being thrown and broken. Grab Sebastian and thankfully at that time we were friends with our neighbours across the road and I had to like run across the road half fucking naked holding Sebastian banging on their door. My friend was in the bath so she didn't hear me for ages so I'm just standing crying and shaking holding Sebastian who's trying to get out of my arms. And I don't know if he realised he did this but he'd be like yelling at me angry and he would like go like like that and again that felt like a oh I want to hit you so bad but I'm holding back. In watching her video I felt very bad for her. She was genuinely scared that the video he made was going to make her lose her income, her supporters, her career that she built on YouTube. That made me really sad because for her to think that people would not feel bad for her from that video and that she would lose people because of the video that he made just tells me that he was beating her down with that stuff a lot. What happens when you watch the video that he made, you feel bad for her because he never should have said any of that stuff on the internet to begin with. There was no point in it. It didn't have the effect that he was looking for, obviously. And on top of that, for some reason in his brain, he thinks casually mentioning that he has an anger issue is going to make when she came out talking about the types of things that he was actually doing be not that bad because he cleared it up already. No, the stuff that she was saying was terrifying. It's shocking to me that he was the one that put out a two hour video about her first. I'm surprised that she didn't put one out about him. She's clearly been doing a lot of trying to protect him. It's funny because in his video, he was saying she didn't care about me at all. I can actually tell that she cared a lot more than he did. Not only did did he make the video that he did about it, but he also really downplayed the cheating that he did and made it sound like it wasn't that big of a deal because he was emotionally already gone. And you can tell in her video, like she's crying. She's obviously still extremely distraught by this stuff. And he's just very angry and careless. Meanwhile, saying she didn't care. That's not what's translating through the screen to all of us. I'm seeing him not caring and her caring a lot because she could have said this stuff about him a long time ago. And apparently, I guess he justified making this video that he made because there's been little off comments throughout her content here and there. Of course, there's going to be little comments here and there that she may make because that was a big part of her life. If somebody, abuses you or acts like he did, slamming holes in the wall, scaring the crap out of you. If that person wants to mention that, they are allowed to do that. I It's something that really bothers me really bad is when people will do terrible things to another person and then be like, don't talk about that. Don't make her feel guilty for talking about something that she went through that was probably extremely traumatic. I also want to say this, like if enough people like are mad at what you said, you may want to look at what you said. And if you can't see that, you maybe need to do a little bit more self-reflection. Oh my God, I also forgot to mention this. He talked about how she stole his computer and his camera. She says they were given to her as a gift and the camera was what she filmed her YouTube videos with. It was like a better camera. He had given me a different camera at one point as well that I hadn't really got around to using yet because I didn't really understand. There was things I didn't know how to work so I wasn't really using it yet. And he was mad at me for that because it's better than this one. And I was like, I'll get to it. Just like, I haven't figured it out. But he gave me a better camera. It was in the box along with this one and a bunch of my other stuff, and maybe even the laptop. I can't remember if it was in that box or another one, but that was all sitting and I didn't have access to these things because, you know, he threw me out of my house and all my belongings then were in that house with him and I couldn't come get them whenever I wanted. Box of my YouTube equipment. This camera's in there, other camera's in there. He went into that box of equipment, stole back that other camera that he had given me that was at that point my property. He stole it back and just left left me with it and this camera was left in there so if he wanted this camera so desperately why would he have left it behind with all that other stuff it doesn't make any sense he is literally lying because he's decided he wants these things back now i don't know if he's having money tro troubles and he wants to sell them because he has better versions of all these things so i'm assuming he just wants the money but they're my things that he gave me and he's now changed his mind on and now he is spreading this narrative that i've stolen from him and it's disgusting that is such a nasty sneaky underhanded thing to do when you know that these things were given to me. So he starts texting and calling her and trying to get a hold of her after they broke up to get these items back. And he said in his video that the cops showed up because she called the cops for him allegedly harassing her. On her side, she says that he gave her the camera and the laptop as a gift. She knew 
that he was going to use these things against her. Like whenever he would text her something nice, she knew he was gonna use those screenshots against her and that's exactly what he did. I think it's extremely gross if you give somebody a gift and then later try to take it back. That's not how that works. If I was anybody around him, I would be extremely cautious about what I accept from him. If I, if you accept money from him, gifts from him, be careful because the second he's mad at you, he's gonna make a video about you and show every screenshot and everything he ever gave you. Cause like he's doing that to somebody that he was with for over a decade. So there were a couple things that she said that like he lied about. And one of them was the timeline of him being with this new girl. So apparently her name's Kat. She is married and also has a child with this this guy. They already knew each other and apparently he made it sound like nothing happened between the two of them until after him and Kaya broke up. But Kaya said they didn't break up. They were on a break. He led Kaya to believe that they were just on a break, but in his brain, he used that as an opportunity to get with somebody else. So Kaya's staying in this studio and he has this new girl who's also married show up and I guess they hook up, right? And he goes on tour. Kaya goes to stay in the house and to get some of her stuff together. She said that this girl's hair was all over the place and that there was like this stuff all over the sheets, <laughs> which is really funny because he talked a lot about how she didn't clean anything up, but he didn't clean that up knowing that she was gonna be in there. It almost comes off intentional. So I guess the way that he said things in the video just was not true. He made it sound like it wasn't that bad when it really was, it was bad. And there's one thing that I don't have 100% evidence of. So I called him and I was like, what the fuck? Like, where have you gone? It's the middle of the night. You've just stormed out without saying anything to me. Like, what are you doing? And he yelled at me and got angry and he was like, I'm in, I'm in North Belfast, I can go for a drive if I want. North Belfast at that time meant nothing to me. And like I said, I didn't put two and two together until quite recently. At that point, that's where Kat lived. Kat lived in North Belfast and I know this because whenever everything blew up, um, there were a couple of times that me and her husband had met up to obviously discuss the whole thing because we only each had like little pieces of the story and I'd given him a lift home. So yeah, they lived in North Belfast at that point. That's where Kat lived and that's where he went that night that we had a fight was out to North Belfast, so I can't prove that he was with her, but and it was the day after that then. It was the next day after he had went off to North Belfast in the middle of the night that he broke up with me. So like I said, don't have any receipts for that, but make of that what you will. And I guess he's still with that girl to this day, so she's probably not married anymore, hopefully not. But the reason why Kaya even found out that it was this girl that he cheated on her with was because her husband contacted her and was like, are you and Jake broken up? Because he found out what they were doing. This thing is so messy. Really big thing that made me be like, oof, I'm doing a video about that. So he posted in his Instagram story, something to the effect of that he was taking his video down in 10 minutes and he wanted Kaya to do the same. And he would basically take it down if she did. And if she didn't take it down, he was going to repost his video. He was threatening her. He privated his video, trying to manipulate her to take hers down to get some of the heat off of himself. And then I see in her story that apparently, as I'm filming this video, Supposedly there's another one that's gonna come out and guys, I don't even know what could possibly be in this video other than things that's just gonna make him look worse. I just, I really don't know. I don't know what to expect. I also want to send my love and support to Kaya and to let her know that, um, you don't have anything to worry about, girl. You were treated like crap in that relationship and you deserved somebody to be more understanding and respectful of you. Like I said, I understand in a relationship being frustrated if somebody messy, it doesn't mean that they deserve to be screamed at, have things hit and destroyed in front of them to make them feel terrified. Like that's scary and he needs to have some acknowledgement for that. And what I would like to say to him is, I really do think that you need to do a little bit more maturing before you say that you've matured matured, but I feel like from this situation, it comes off like you still have a lot to learn. I'm sending my love and support to Kaya. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are in the comments down below, and I will definitely be seeing you guys for another video.